Hi everyone and welcome to the introductory course on molecular dynamics simulations. In this course we're going to have an introduction to molecular dynamics, to the basic history of molecular dynamics and the basic physics behind molecular dynamics. And at the end of the course we will start our first molecular dynamics simulations together. How to see the system, how to run the simulation and how to analyze it. So this course is oriented to the beginners in computational chemistry, people from experimental background who see molecular dynamics as some magic or very hard topic, but uh, we will try to make it as simple as possible. So before I start, I'd like to highlight the quote of Richard Finneman. He said that everything that living things do can be understood in terms of the jiggling and wiggling of atoms. So if we know how atoms move, how atoms vibrate, how atoms interact, this can give us insights about many of biological and chemical systems. So in this box here, here's a photo of a simulation, of a molecular dynamics simulation. As you see here is a membrane protein and simulated in cubic box and this literally what we do in molecular dynamics we simulate the biological or the real environment of a protein like that and see what's happening so as all of you know membrane proteins are very crucial for or very important for for the biological function of the cell they control everything so if you want to understand how membrane protein behaves in the, the antibiotic resistance or, or development or any of antibiotic resistance or any other function, uh, biological function, so molecular dynamics is the only tool that will give you insight into what's happening at the atomistic level. So Richard Feynman would write about that. So I, I put this slide at the beginning, of course, because one of my friends from experimental background, he considered the computational chemistry are just people who do some analysis or solve some equations, but they cannot reach the Nobel level prize. Uh, sorry, the Nobel prize level. And I just, I mean, I like this Nobel prize uh, on 1998, which was shared by Walter Cohen and John Apple. Walter Cohen for his development on the DFT theory, the density functional theory, and the other parts were given to John for his development of computational methods in quantum chemistry. And this wasn't the only Nobel Prize which were given to a computational chemist. So there is a lot to be discovered in computational chemistry, especially after the breakthrough in the hardware development. So after the Nobel Prize in 1998, I like the economist comment on that when they said that in the real world, this could eventually mean that the most chemical experiments or biological are conducted inside a silicon chip instead of the glassware of laboratories. So turn off that benzene uh, burner, it will not be wanted in 10 years. Yeah, this sounds fancy for computational chemistry or structured bioinformatics. But I disagree with this. Yeah, it's fine that show that the computational chemistry is very important, but I am one of those who believe that the best results will be get uh, will be got when we combine the computational chemistry with the experimental results. So we in the in, in the wet lab we do experiments to generate data. So we, we, we perform molecular dynamics of this data to understand it better. Or we predict something with computational or molecular dynamics and we perform experiments to validate it. So I like the combination between both of them. But still, the computational chemistry is very cool if performed in a good way. Now, what does molecular dynamics mean in simple? In simple, it's a technique of computer simulations of a complex system modeled at the atomic level. So we model how the atoms of the system behave together. And I like this slide. This is not general for molecular dynamics, but this is from the development of NEMD, which is the one of the most famous 
molecular dynamics simulations programs. And I'm tired of saying molecular dynamics, so we will refer it as MD simulations. So MD is the, one of the most famous MD simulation software, and you see the development. They started in 1990 with lysozyme enzyme, which is quite small, and till now they achieved a tissue simulation, a protocell model simulation in 2019. So and it still continue, and this is because of the huge improvement in the computational hardwares or in computers resources. Uh, I mean the GPU and parallel computing, so we can perform longer simulations in short time. So we are improving in the complexity of the model system and in the length of the simulation. So people start to reach minutes of simulation. And uh, imagine if you can uh, model the whole tissue or the whole virus, like HIV virus, the AIDS virus here. It was modeled in, in, in 2010. And uh, there's something that cannot be achieved in experiments. In experiments, you cannot see how an amino acid behave inside a protein, how an atom ins behave inside this, uh, this virus. So, Still a lot to go, and it's very, very promising field. So, after this fancy historical introduction, let's get into science. How does this MD simulation work? MD simulation is based mainly in the laws of this guy, all of you know him, the Newtonian dynamics, to determine the net force and acceleration experienced by each other. So what does this mean? Sounds very complicated, but it's really, really very simple. So if we get back to review um, Newton models or Newton uh, first Newton's first law of motion, as all of you from high school or primary school, a body maintains its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by force. So when atom is going like this guy and hit the brick wall, brick wall, something will happen. The force will, will change the motion. So that exactly happens in the systems we model. An atom is going and got affected by another atom. A positive ion is going to attracted by a negative ion or there are van der Waals. We will get into this in two details, but this video is going to be just an introduction. So also the second law, which is the core of, of MD simulations, it say that the applied force is equal to the rate of a change of momentum. So this cute girl forced the, 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 the acceleration of the box. If we give her two boxes, the acceleration will drop to by 50% and etc. And this is the F equal M multiplied by A, when A was, which is the acceleration. And this is the basic equation in molecular dynamics. So, and the third law, for every cat, sorry, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, if, I atom, if I'm an atom with a force and I'm going to hit another atom, so... So, so we what is the magic from behind the molecular dynamics simulation that makes it able to predict or calculate the evolution of atomic positions over time? That makes it, in another word, how to be able to predict the new position of the atoms over a specific period of time. Actually, the, there is no magic behind that. There is the Newtonian mechanics, as we said earlier in this video. Specifically, the second law of motion of Newton, which is state that F equal, equals M multiplied by A. So, if you know the force, if you can cal calculate the force from the energy or interactions between atoms, the force applied from atom to another. And if you know the mass, of course you know the mass of atoms. This is something fixed. So it can go, it can get the acceleration. And from basic physics, you know that acceleration, the, nu the numerical integration of acceleration can give you the velocity. And if you know the velocity from, and you know the initial position of the atom, so you can calculate the new position. I like to call this the MD simulation cycle. So you start from initial coordinations, 
you calculate the energy from the energy you can get the force as you know the force is the gradient of the energy from the force you can get the acceleration and from the acceleration you can calculate the new positions and etc and MD softwares perform millions of steps or cycles uh, if you perform the molecular dynamics simulation before I think you, you have seen the integration types usually it's in femtoseconds so you, you perform the cycle each uh, femtosecond so in another slide I want to show you this cycle better here if you have these atoms of your system you are simulating protein for example and this is atom 5, atom 4, atom 6 each atom has a force that applies to another atom based on the chemical nature and the distance between them like van der Waals or whatever dipoles ionic interactions etc we're gonna go over this in details in equations and everything but now I'm talking generally about MD so at the beginning what we know is we know the uh, the position initial position of your of your structure and you know the mass so keep the mass in your pocket now and let's from the distance we can calculate the energy between atoms because we know the interatomic uh, interactions between between atoms so we can get the energy of the system from the energy we can calculate the force and we already have the mass in our pocket so we can get the acceleration and if we integrate this acceleration numer numerically we can get the new positions and etc and this help at the end of the classical molecular dynamics we can predict or calculate the new positions of your atoms in the system so that's it sound very very basic so before we close the first video I want to tell you about the different or the two main methods of uh, molecular dynamics or molecular simulation there are up in issue quantum methods we're gonna go over this in details and force field uh, molecular methods so what is the difference between them is the Force field methods or molecular, uh, it, it's what we talked about in, in this video. It's, a, it's, a, it's based on molecular mechanics and it's fast and it's very useful, but it cannot tell you about their actions or about the bond breakage or bond formation because it's about only molecular mechanics, about how atoms move in the system. But QM, it can tell you more about their action because it's on the electron level. But it's more uh, consuming more uh, computational power. Uh, but it's if you, if you want to know what, how the reaction is going to be or, or whatever, you, you should use quantum uh, mechanics. But if you're interested in the conformational changes of protein or whatever, you're gonna work on classical molecular dynamics. And this series is gonna be on classical molecular dynamics. And now we have uh, we're having uh, an introduction in this video to make you familiar of the terms or definition we're gonna use in the next videos because we're gonna define what's force field in details and what are the interactions between atom that based on it we calculate the energy and by equations how we convert energy into force how we convert how we convert force into acceleration and. Uh, might be at the end of this course we can go also over quantum mechanics uh, but uh, as I said this is going to be only on the not only or mostly on the classical molecular dynamics please don't hesitate to comment on this video or let me know if I said something wrong or if you have any suggestions criticism or whatever and thank you and don't forget to like and subscribe and suggest us new topics and let's communicate as a scientific community because we are learning together. I'm doing these videos for myself before for people because when I force myself to explain, I force myself to learn. And thank you.